right, so I'm down here by the ocean this morning here in Victoria, and I'm trying to record some good quality video footage. And I wanted to show you some of the features that might help you to get good quality footage. So as you can see here, I've got my big lens, which makes it harder to work with because there is vibration and you know, the purpose of this uh, ebook is not to get you to go and spend $5,000 on a professional video head. We're working with the, the equipment that we've already got. So I've got my Wimberly here, which is a great product. Um, but if you were to compare that to a really expensive video head as far as smooth panning and stuff like that, you'd see quite a difference. Got my solid tripod here and I'm ready to go. Um, so a few settings first of all. Um, those will be discussed in the book, but ideally you want to shoot at a uh, shutter speed that's twice your frame rate. So we're shooting at 24 frames per second. So ideally we'd want to be about 1 50th of a second, but this starts to pose problems. You can see it's a very bright day. It's a beautiful day out. And even if I go down to ISO 100, I would be forced to really stop the lens way, way, way down, which would give the video a sort of a strange look, not really the, the wildlife photography look that I'm going after. So sometimes you just have to shoot with the aperture settings and the lowest ISO, and then the shutter speed's gonna do what it's gonna do. Um, if you were shooting uh, more of a cinema style and you were indoors and you were using a wide angle lens, you could get a variable neutral density filter and just you know put that to eight stops and, and, and there you go. But that's not the reality when you're shooting with a 600 millimeter lens out here. So we definitely wanna um, turn our image stabilization off when we're shooting video like this. Uh, one of the big reasons is that the IS motor actually makes some noise. So um, if you're using a really good microphone and you're getting it up off camera, you might be able to get away with using IS, but if you're not, you definitely want to shut off the IS because otherwise you're gonna hear that sound in all your videos. Um, as you can see, I've got an external mic, an external shotgun microphone hooked up up here, and I've added the little windscreen on there. It's not super windy today, but I wanted to try to make sure to minimize the effect of wind. As I've mentioned in the book, getting really good audio is often the hardest part of taking a good video um, because you have so much background. Like a helicopter just went by a minute ago, I had to wait before I could shoot. Um, and just trying to record that good audio from a bird that's pretty far away without getting a lot of background noise can be tricky. So using an external microphone will really help. And if it's windy at all, using a windscreen will definitely help. Other than that, it's just um, a question of finding my subject, getting my tripod good and stable, ideally fairly level, and then once I get on the subject, if he's fairly stationary, locking down the tripod and getting your hands off the camera, and that'll give you a really good quality clip. If the subject is moving, now the 72 here that I'm shooting with can actually track a moving subject, then of course you can't lock things down, you have to pan with them, so it's just about doing that as smoothly as you can and hoping that the focus stays locked on your subject. So let's give it a try here. Let's see if we can get a good clip of these black oyster catchers just over here. So when it comes to video settings when you're in the field, generally speaking, I think you're gonna to wanna to record at 24 frames per second or as close as your camera lets you. That's sort of what our eye looks natural to our eye. But if you think, for example, that you might wanna film something and then go back in editing and slow it down, do some slow-mo, then it does make sense to film in a higher frame rate, something my camera lets me do close to 60 frames per second. If you watch that footage back normally, it will look quite strange. But if you wanted to slow it down, you of course have you know, more than twice as many frames to work with. So it allows you to do a little bit of a smoother slow motion footage. So that's something to keep in mind when you're in the field recording your videos.